Well, hello. I wanted to take a few minutes and introduce you to the painting media. Painting is one of my favorite media. I like to work with acrylic and watercolor, but my painting media of choice is oil paint. And so I thought it would be beneficial to, to walk you through some of the steps involved in my painting process. Most of the time when we talk about a painting, we talk about the final piece, you know, what's hanging on the gallery wall. So I thought in this video, I could provide just some firsthand insight into my creative process, which I know may look completely different from another artist and certainly different from the old masters. But by, by seeing the various steps, I think you'll get a stronger grasp of the myriad of decisions that artists make on their journey and before they land on their, their final idea. Okay, so this big squiggle that I have here, this represents the design process. And that little green dot represents the final work that you see on the gallery walls. And so artists aim to make this final work as seamless, elegant, and streamlined as possible. But to arrive at this moment of clarity, the artists must make their way through a lot of chaos and uncertainty. And, and that's just how it goes with any creative process. And so on my journey with this specific painting that I'll be talking about in this video, it, it began with an idea, uh, an idea of developing an entire body of work that contemporized medieval saints. It was a concept that I had explored in grad school back in 2016 when I made this this contemporary version of Sebastian. And, and after I made this piece, I thought it would just be an interesting project to, to pursue someday. And so when I start the project, I begin by just reading a few books on medieval saints, uh, writing copious notes and lists and, and just brainstorming possibilities. This is the, the kind of wandering in the wilderness phase. You know, I'm not, I'm not sure what will stick or resonate, but I'm just kind of gathering. Uh, and as I quickly read through the, the bios of, of hundreds of figures from church history, I I develop an initial list of about 50 figures or, or stories that I find interesting. And then from there, I develop a list of, of 18 for potential possibilities for, for artwork. And then I cut that list down to my final 12. And so here's actually one of those, those lists. And, and from this point, I'm just gonna show you what my research looked like for, for one of these ideas. Uh, Francis of Assisi, who was actually someone I had already been drawn to before beginning this project. He was born in the 12th century and was one of the most influential people in medieval church history. And so when trying to determine how to capture him, I compile a folder of images of, of artwork and study how he has been depicted in art history. He is typically shown with, with birds, and that's how people identify him to be Francis. And this tradition really recalls a time when Francis was preaching and all the birds come around him as if they're listening. And so he's often depicted in art with, with birds. And so I'm thinking about this, kind of paying attention, not only to details like the birds, but, but also to gestures and, and things like the bare feet. I was also considering other stories from the life of Francis. So there's this famous story of how Francis renounces his wealth by, by publicly removing his expensive clothes and, and, and then he devotes his life to poverty. And so this image here shows him removing a shirt and renouncing his wealth. In his life, Francis really aimed to imitate Christ and Christ's suffering. And so I was trying to think about how to incorporate these themes and, and how to capture it. As I was researching Francis and birds, I, I came across this photo and it was funny at first, but, but then then I found that there was just something striking about that nest on his head. I also liked how it reminded me of the crown of thorns. And so I, I kind of tucked these ideas away. I was also looking at other Christian imagery and looking at poses, you know, like the, the cruciform pose of, of Christ, as well as the, the posture of prayer that the early Christians used. And so I was looking at that. I was, I was also thinking of how to contemporize all of this, you know, bring this historic imagery into modernity and allowing it to speak to a new audience. And so I, I started looking at bird feeders and, and bird baths. I, I liked how these contemporary objects provided rest and, and nourishment for, for birds uh, before they took off in flight. And, and as I was looking up these imagery, I stumbled upon this funny image, which strangely resonated 
did and and got me thinking of lots of ideas and so I started sketching out all these different concepts and and actually here's one of those early sketches I became fascinated with the idea of bird feeders hanging on Francis as if he were like a tree you know trying to provide rest and nourishment and sustain the birds uh, some spiritual symbolism there I, I also liked how he was replicating the the cruciform and that the nest on his head looked like the crown of thorns and so I was just kind of seeing a lot of layers developing here and so I saw that this had potential and then I started working with the silhouette and and thinking about what it would look like if I added birds and, and when I did I really liked how this was looking and so this was when I started really kind of locking down on on this particular concept and so I took this concept and I start working out the form in clay so that I could experiment with just some different lighting I then returned to my images and and thought who I might ask to model for the work I went through the picture directory and immediately saw some connections between imagery of Francis and my friend Reed Harrell so, so I shoot Reed a message on social media and I, I ask if he would be willing to participate and explain the project a little bit and he agrees and and then we set up a time for the photo shoot and I go out and I buy bird feeders and my friend Lindsay helps me with with the photo shoots and we actually had a few back to back and so here we are testing out the lighting before my friend Reed arrives for for the photo shoot so he comes and I have the bird feeders and all the bird seeds set up and we just take a variety of photos some in different lighting with different arrangements of the feeders and and here are some clips of that process so after a 30 minute session I then take the pictures and go back home and kind of look through the pictures and select one that I will use as my final reference and then I take the pictures and I put them on Photoshop I remove the background and combine a few elements and then it's time to add the birds and I, I actually spent a few hours just working out the arrangement of the birds only to discover that the arrangement that feels the best it kind of in hindsight resembles this outline of, of wings so you know fun things along the way it's at this point that I need to make some decisions about the color scheme that I'll be using for the painting I actually keep an assortment of favorite color schemes saved on Instagram so I go through all of these and I pick out the ones that just give me the same vibe that I want this particular painting to give and from those I, I take these color schemes and come up with 80 options for the background color I know this is a bit extreme but but then from those 80 options I narrow it down to eight and here's where I land on the final color arrangements and now once I've got all of this worked out I am finally ready to to go to the large painting but as you can see a lot had to be kind of worked out before I could turn my attention to making this final piece uh, now when it is time for, for the final uh, painting the the painting itself goes through many different stages there is the base coat layer and this covers the the white surface so I'm not fighting the white the whole time and and it also gives the painting just an overall tone and and unifying color underneath everything in the second layer I then draw out the figure and arrange the composition and then I go in and thinly paint in the values so that's actually what you see me doing here in the vi video uh, it's at this point that I'm not my only focus is on the accuracy of the the drawing and the values I'm not really concerned about color I just need to get this initial thin layer down the third layer takes the longest this is when I've established my values but I need to go over everything and really try to match the color and and bring in the form and then the last layer is when I bring in things like my palette knife and, and I focus on surface details and, and just do all the major kind of refinements. Here are a few clips from those last two stages. And you can see me utilize different techniques and, and mark making uh, to, to just bring in some variety here. Now each piece in the series took around two to three weeks. This was the largest one, so it took around three weeks. And, and now I'm showing you the final image. And here we are at one of the exhibitions. Here's a quick scan of all of the paintings in the series. The work was shown in several galleries in Arkansas before landing at the M2 gallery in Little Rock, where the piece was then purchased by a collector. So there you have it from, from start to finish. <laughs>
Well, I hope that that provided a little insight into the various steps involved in composing and, and creating a painting. Uh, we'll see you next time.